Honorable Law and Parliamentary Affairs Minister, um, distinguished freedom fighters, Dr. Krishna, Mr. Vishu Kumar, distinguished guests, my friends, good afternoon. Thank you for inviting me. I'm delighted to be here to celebrate Gandhi Jayanti with you today. And I must confess that while this is truly an honor, it has had me scared to death trying to figure out what I might say to you. I, I've been worrying about this for weeks. Uh, all of you here today have grown up with Gandhi Ji. You have known him and loved him all your life. And what can an American tell you about somebody who is an essential part of your national fabric. However, here we are, so let me try and give you my thoughts on the subject and please bear with me. For me, when I think of Gandhiji, I think first of, of South Africa, of the Satyagraha, and how that came to be. It was in South Africa that Gandhiji learned to lead. He reached out to people by sharing knowledge, giving people the means to educate themselves, to become aware of their situation and of their rights as human beings. Gandhiji used knowledge to awaken his people. His great triumph there was his writing, his retransmission of news reports, his analysis of the news, his opinions about the implications of the news, and ultimately, his creation of communities that understood their rights and obligations under the law, communities to which he taught the nuts and bolts about how to affect change, how to question authority. Today, some might say he was a blogger, but, but one with purpose. He certainly would have embraced the internet, but of course he would have had very strong opinions about the net. There is no doubt in my mind about that. You can read his prolific output during those days in the collected works or in Indian opinion. He was a fount of information. With knowledge came courage, and with courage came freedom. Not absolute freedom, of course. The fight continued and continues to this day. But this was his start. Gandhi's insight that knowledge leads to freedom was not new. Just look right here in Karnataka at the work of Lord Basavana and the Sharana movement, a movement that created the great Anubhava Mantapa Parliament, a movement based on equality and education, a movement that created the great flowering of the Vachanas, a movement whose spirit lives on today despite its brutal suppression. The fight for freedom and justice is not a battle that can be won or lost in a moment. It requires our unflagging attention. As Martin Luther King said, change does not come rolling in on the wheels of inevitability. It comes only with continuous struggle. Gandhiji embraced two very simple concepts in his work, two powerful tools at the core of his practice. The first was the idea of public work. Public work is work that benefits your community, work done without recompense, an essential part of our function and our duty as citizens. The second concept that Gandhiji embraced was that of bread labor, an idea that he got from the Bible which teaches that by the sweat of your brow shalt thou eat thy bread. This means you must do some form of real labor every day. You must work for your bread. We must respect all work, and especially respect all those who work. This teaching from the Bible is remarkably similar to the message of the Vachanas, that work is worship. Worshiping is not enough. One must work as the means of showing devotion. As is said today, God only helps those who help themselves. You probably think of the chakra when you think of bread labor, the iconic image of Gandhiji at his spinning wheel, his everyday labor. The spinning wheel broke the chain, the chain of indigo and cotton farmers who sent their goods to Manchester where it became the cloth that was sold back to them. This was a vicious circle. To grow the indigo and the cotton, farmers were forced to take out loans to buy the seed, and a spiral of debt 
and famine brought India to extreme poverty, a cycle that brought immense wealth to the Raj, but none to the people of India. By spinning, by performing bread labor, the people helped break that cycle and a nation awoke. But in South Africa, where Gandhi first began his public work, bread labor was not spinning cotton. It was printing, it was typesetting. Printing was about spinning words into knowledge. At the Phoenix Ashram, everybody worked the printing press. Typesetting was their bread labor. The printing press was a means to propagate knowledge, the means by which individuals educated themselves and each other, the means by which they became a people, a people united, a people that won their Satyagraha campaign. Knowledge gave birth to truth, and truth gave birth to freedom. The increase and diffusion of knowledge is what we are doing here at Gandhi Bhavana, and I thank this amazing institution for giving us this beautiful home from which we can scan. We call ourselves the servants of knowledge. We are now digitizing over 14 lock pages every month, and we hope to double that capacity soon. Most of us involved in this endeavor have been practicing access to knowledge for many years. Our current efforts in Bengaluru began at the Indian Academy of Sciences, which gave us our first home. We use that base to digitize their materials, as well as many books from CSRI laboratories. We've continued those efforts in Mangaluru, where we help 4,000 uh, Konkani books go online. We also assisted the Roja Muthaya Library in Chennai, where we continue to work with a number of volunteers who are passionate about the Tamil language. Likewise, we work with Sanskrit and Telugu scholars who help improve the metadata of some of our online collections on the Internet Archive, a collection of over eight lakh books in over 150 languages. Here in Bengaluru, much of the credit for our work goes to my friend and colleague, Om Shiva Prakash, who has been instrumental in putting thousands of books in Canada online. His work goes back many years. He has assisted the Wikipedia, many other organizations, has done seminal work that goes beyond mere digitization, producing high quality dictionaries, fonts for the Canada language, and so much more. He's worked with publishers to make some of their older books available under a Creative Commons license so that they may be freely used for non-commercial purposes. His work has been widely recognized throughout Karnataka, and I'm proud to work with him. I'd also like to recognize two of my other colleagues who are with here today. Dr. Lawrence Liang is the founding dean of the School of Law at Ambikar University. He's a winner of the prestigious Infosys Prize and a leading light in the fields of intellectual property and film studies. Dr. Sushant Sinha is also here today. He is a creator of the amazing Indian Kanoon system that gives free access not only to legal professionals, but to all the people of India, to the judgments of the courts, the acts of the legislatures, the official gazettes, and much more. Both Lawrence and Sushant play an integral role in our efforts. It's a great pleasure to work with both of them. Our scanning has been in many locations. Recently, we worked with the BM Shri Pratishtana, digitizing large portions of their collections. For the last year, we have been working at the National Law School of India University, where we've digitized their entire library, and we'll be making all those books available to the visually impaired at law schools all across India. Now we are here at Gandhi Bhavana. We are up and running and beginning to scan the entire library. We're very excited to be here. Our efforts are focused on the public domain and making knowledge available to all. The idea that the great riches of our library should be available to all also has deep roots in the philosophy of Gandhiji. When he was in London, there were three books that opened his eyes and changed his life. The first, of course, was the Bhagavad Gita, which he read first in the English translation, the song Celestial from Edwin Arnold. The text became a guiding light for him, and it is as it is for many of you here today. The second book was the Bible, 
which she learned about from an anonymous vegetarian from Manchester he met in a hotel. In particular, the New Testament, and especially the Sermon on the Mount, his reinterpretation of the meaning of that sermon had a great effect on many Christians, especially Martin Luther King. The third book was more obscure. It was a legal treatise called Snell on Equity. It was a textbook for law students, which is what he was at the time. From Snell, Gandhiji learned about trusteeship, a legal concept that led him to the idea that great wealth does not belong to the rich. It is only held in trust and belongs to the community and must be used for the welfare of the community. This holds true for libraries as well, which are trustees of knowledge. They are rich in books, but they hold them in trust for us. But this concept is even broader, for we live in a democracy. We as citizens are the titular landlords, the owners of our government. But the reality is we only hold our democracy in trust for the benefit of future generations. This trusteeship is a serious responsibility, one we must take on with enthusiasm and devotion. As it says here in Bengaluru on the walls of the Vidana Saoda, government's work is God's work. Public work, bread labor, and trusteeship are three ideas that guide our own work, but these concepts should be relevant to everybody. For public work, for bread labor, we must each conduct our own experiments with truth to contribute to our communities however we may. For us, that means scanning in order to promote the increase and diffusion of knowledge. Perhaps you are in tech and you contribute to open source software or you adopt and support your local nonprofit or you contribute articles to the Wikipedia or translate it to your language. These efforts can be big or they can be small. Maybe you tutor neighborhood children. Or maybe you make two million school lunches a day, like the Akshaya Patra Foundation here in Karnataka. As Bob Dylan says, no matter what you do, no matter who you are, you've got to serve somebody. You can contribute any way you see fit. Bread labor is personal. It is the sweat of your brow. Public work is also personal. It is how you choose to be a citizen, how you choose to do your duty. Do what you will, but do something. For the servants of knowledge, scanning is the new spinning. It is our bread labor. It is our public work. Universal access to knowledge is the great promise of our times. Knowledge is the key that unlocks the doors to a better future. Knowledge by itself is not enough. It must be combined with action. Dasamaya said that unless the fire joins the wind, it would not know how to move. Bread labor and public work are the key to action. Knowledge is the wind. Action is the fire. Knowledge is the key to how we educate ourselves, our children, our brethren, but it is more. Knowledge is the key to opportunity. Knowledge is the key to democracy. Knowledge is the key to freedom. Let us unlock those doors and let us walk through them together. Thank you for coming today. Thank you for inviting me. Happy Gandhi Gianti to all of you. Thank you very much.